talk a little British Open and talk a little golf with my main man, Jerry Foltz, who I have known for a long time. Jerry's actually in Denver, and we'll find out why he's there. But, Jerry, welcome to the Sports Bash. How are you, pal? Thanks. But, uh, I'm doing good. I'm not exactly sure where I am because it was uh, spent some crazy travel lately coming to Denver British Open. But, uh, yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, world traveler Jerry Fultz. Uh, I guess let's start with this. First and foremost, I want to go back to think that I met you 98, 99 maybe as you were covering the, what was then the Buy.com tour or was it even maybe the Nike tour still at that point for that Omaha Classic? Uh, it still was in the uh, Buy.com tour by that era, I believe. It was in the Nation Buster, wouldn't it? What those two? Anyway, that's a long time ago, as Tony uh, keeps on saying. That's 50 or 120 years ago, I believe. Yeah, it does, it does seem like uh, just yesterday in some regards, and then other times I look at you and you just give me that grin like, man, that's a long time ago. But you're still pounding the pavement, if you will, or uh, walking the fairways, if you will, reporting for Golf Channel. I thoroughly enjoy your coverage. Of course, you come here to Atlantic City every year for the ShopRite LPGA Classic, but most recently you were part of the early coverage at Royal Birkdale for the British Open. So I guess I'll open with an easy softball of a question, which was, uh, did it go the way you thought it would go, and what was your takeaway from the tournament? Uh, well, I guess you don't really ever have a, an anticipation going into uh, an Open Championship because the weather has is such a determining factor on how things can transpire, at least over the first few days. And it was a fairly even draw in that regard. But once Jordan, once you saw Jordan speed, and I followed him uh, one of those first two days, um, once you saw the way he was striking the ball and making the putts, it would have been uh, very shocking had he not pulled it off on Sunday. Then he gave us every reason to think he wasn't going to pull it off on Sunday. I mean, he was flat out nervous. And, uh, I don't think I heard the word on the air, but it looked like he was choking. And then all of a sudden he, uh, he hits a foul ball like you can't believe, 99 yards off the fairway, and he snapped into superhero mode all of a sudden. And it was that was uh, that was some great drama, and yeah, I guess it came off as I expected, as I expected it in the win starting the day. I think everybody did. We just expected it to be a lot easier. The twenty-minute delay it took for him to hit a shot. The social media blew up over that. About doesn't isn't there a five-minute rule? A lot of people think they understand the rules. One thing I took away from that, Jerry Fultz, was that Jordan Spieth really understands the rules because the microphone's picked up where at the very end he's given all these instructions, he's looking at this, he's trying to find, you know, it was kind of a combination of two rulings. And then at the very end, the last thing he says before he hits his shot is, hey, hey, Mike, you got to move too. Like he, he knew enough about the rules to even tell his caddy, I can't use you as like a reference point or a marking point. You got to get out of the way as well. I mean, just the, the knowledge that he had in that delay was pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive. The fact that he looked back there and then asked the rules official at the driving range was out of bounds. Uh, that showed a, uh, an, an awareness of mind. Every player in the in the field, every player that plays at a high level, knows that's one of your options to go back as far as you can, keep the point where the ball will have between you and the ball. So I think everybody probably would have come up with that option, but in that situation, your mind is racing. It's really, I mean, the way he was walking around through the manufacturer's trucks near the driving range was showing you that his mind just wasn't clear, but it was clear enough to, uh, to understand uh, the potential of the rules. Now, if my answer, while he took the shot, and he was indicating a line of play as he took the shot, that would have been a penalty, but um, he, was, he was pretty smart about it. He had a decent shot out of there, although he thought he pushed it way right uh, and got, on, got up and down. That was the hugest thing, making bogey from there was was incredible. And then what he did the next four holes was just mind-boggling. Yeah, so you saw that as well. When he hit that shot from the driving range, he didn't fully grab his head like he did off the tee ball, but he, it, I think he thought he was in that right front bunker and he was in jail like he was dead. But to me, that, that chip that he had over the bunker was incredible. And then, of course, as you reference on the par 3, uh, 14th, he darn near jarred it. I mean, that's just laser focus right there. Yeah, no, I think he thought he hit that third shot, it would have been, from over at the driving range. I thought he thought he hit that uh, back into the weeds right of the green, and I think the reason for that, when they showed the overhead aerial view, the line that they determined was between him and the hole was actually left green from that angle, but, you know, they made their best judgment, and there's no penalty in, in the rules of finish making a little bit of an error in that regard because you're kind of dancing at that point when you're over a you know 40-foot sand dune. Um, so I think his... The line he was aiming it on would have been short and left of the green, and he thought it would have been on the green. So I think in his mind, he missed that one perhaps in the junk to the right again. 
But uh, you got luck with was short of the green there. And then, like you said, he went from there, the trouble jarring, the tee shot, and the part, and then the putt he made on 15. It looked like it, I mean, it looked like the hole had a vacuum and it sucked it right in. It was, I, I, it was the very last shot they showed before they cut away the replays. But then standing there, to pick up the ball for him, and he saw Roger Malkin in the background with his hand over his face like, I don't believe I just saw that. <laughs> yes, when he made the eagle putt on 15, that, that I mean, I there was an expletive that came out of my mouth. I said, I can't blank believe that. You know, I just couldn't believe that he threw that ball in from so far out on 15. But uh, we'll get away from Jordan for a minute because uh, rules talk sometimes isn't that sexy and exciting. But what is exciting is when a guy throws out a new major tournament record. How about Brandon Grace? And his 62 on Saturday. Now, granted, it is a par 70, but uh, 62 takes away that record from Johnny Miller, your colleague. Uh, I'm sure that was a lot of talk on Saturday. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of talk on Saturday. It was a perfect storm. A lot of people had predicted there would be a 62. I know uh, Colin Montgomery and Nick Faldo had predicted it in the early coverage that I was on. And then when NBC came on, Jim Holmes and Kai, and, uh, we'll talk with him. he said he didn't tell Johnny, but a lot of people thought that was going to happen. And I was kind of surprised it was the only one, actually. Two reasons for the fact that the other people that day, very, very little wind and 70 degree weather. Those are all apparitions when it comes to an open championship at British Open, if you will. How about but, the- uh, well, this one there? Jerry Foltz with us, uh, joining us here to talk about the British Open. He's from the Golf Channel, and he's uh, going to be at a long drive championship tonight in Denver. We'll tell you more about that in just a second. We're uh, making sure we get Jerry on a good connection here as he's crackling in a little bit out. And like he says, a world traveler, Jerry Foltz. I mean, he lives in the Orlando area, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, <laughs> lives in the Orlando area. But in the last two weeks, he's been in Orlando. He's been over the pond, as they say, for the British Open. He's been out in the West Coast, and now he's heading to Denver tonight for a long drive championship to try and uh, watch that. And we'll tell you more about that long drive championship. But in the meantime, we're spending a few minutes with Jerry Fultz to find out about the British Open or the Open Championship. Boy, don't call it the British Open. You'll get in trouble for that. Uh, Jerry Foltz is with us talking about uh, Jordan Spieth coming away with the win. And Jerry, I guess then my next question about Jordan Spieth then is uh, can he complete this career Grand Slam? Is he the guy to beat? And uh, we talked about this on the program yesterday, whether or not he moves the needle the way like a tiger moved the needle. Like Because I thought as a golf geek that I am, wow, that was incredible. I can't believe I saw that. That was so great. And then you sort of look big picture and you go, huh, does any everybody else know about it too? Well, he does move the needle because we got the ratings uh, recently. I guess yesterday I read articles on it this morning that it was the highest rated final round of the Open Championships in eight years. Uh, and that is eclipsing the, the epic showdown between Phil Mickelson and Hendrick Stenson last year. So he's certainly a needle mover. He's, uh, you know, they, his friends call him the golden child. He, uh, his presence on social media lets you know that he doesn't take himself or the, the game itself too seriously, but yet he has that, that heart of a champion, that heart of a lion that comes around once every generation. Tiger had it, Nicholas had it, and it seems as though Jordan has it. So, yes, if, if his game is in great shape, good shape even, heading into the PGA, certainly he'll be the pre-tournament favorite. Uh, the, the wild card, the I think, you know, Rory McIlroy is the one wild card. When Rory plays his absolute best, he wins by a bunch. We haven't seen his best in a while, and who knows if we're going to see it again for a while. But if Rory gets control of his form, then then it's a different story. But other than that, when the players on the PGA Tour and in the major championships see the name of Jordan Spieth creeping up that leaderboard, they do get worried. They don't do that with a lot of other players, but they do get worried when it's him. Yeah, Rory McIlroy, who finished the British Open at minus five, by the way, 71, 68, 69, 67 for a total score at 275. Rory was a guy who had... I think, did he miss the cut at the Scottish Open and everybody was panicking? Like, oh my gosh, he's been over there practicing, he's not ready? That's tied for fourth. Is, is Looks like Rory may be close. Yeah, he missed two straight cuts coming in and then I think three of his previous four tournaments coming into it. So, Jerry Foltz, Brit- British Open in the books, Jordan Spieth, 23 years old, the history that goes with it. But we'd be remiss if we didn't mention his caddy because you mentioned him a few times, I mentioned him a few times. 
that relationship that he has with Greller, could you go into that a little bit and why that's not the norm relationship? He says we a lot when he gives interviews, gives a lot of credit to Michael Greller. Yeah, well, Michael Greller was a middle school math teacher, and uh, he met Jordan during a U.S. junior amateur up at Boston. And when Jordan decided to turn pro, he gave him a shot at the job. He took a leave of absence from his school to go try it. Uh, he's always considered him uh, more of a friend than a caddy and certainly more of a teammate than an employee. And that's a rare uh, – first of all, have, hiring a caddy who had no experience, in, no experience caddying is a rarity, but considering them – uh, more of uh, an, an integral part of the team as opposed to an employee, you know, that, that doesn't happen too often either. Mike makes mistakes, uh, but so does Jordan, and they, they call each other out on them. And I think, uh, I think the measure of a true friend is someone who stabs you in the front. So if they have a disagreement, tell each other, and they get in each other's face. They don't tell other people about it. Wonderful stuff from Jerry Foltz. He's the Golf Channel reporter. You can see him tonight on their coverage from Denver, and we'll get to that in a minute to talk about that World Long Drive Championship. I can't wait to get into that a little bit. But before we leave Jordan Spieth in the open and all that discussion, uh, if we're talking about caddies, uh, you had a new, uh, you had a little competition for your uh, reporting gig out there, right? I mean, uh, Bones Mackay joins the Golf Channel team. Not the first time that he's done it, right? But how do you think he did, and how cool was it to have him as part of your Golf Channel coverage? That's pretty cool. You, you know, it brings a wealth of knowledge being inside the ropes, not only with Bill Eccleston, and God knows how many wins, but on the fact that also it seems to be a play up close and personal for so many years on the PGA Tour. Uh, all reports were that they did a very good job. And them, uh, you know, once when you're at it, trying to learn a new craft, which has to seem very, very interesting, giving you a lot of advice from a lot of people as to what, like, what they like out of commentate on golf on TV. And I said, carefully, you only listen to the ones you know what you're talking about. Probably the ones who've done the same in the past. He's going to bring another uh, element. He's going to bring another element, though, which is that he's not going to call golf shots, perhaps the same way I would, or, or someone who's been doing it for a long time. He's going to he's going to call them from a different perspective. But I told him, I said, we've tried out a lot, and I've trained a lot of on course. There's people who have an interest and want to try. And the people who know the mostly by you second call, certainly your first day, whether you're cut out to do it or not, whether you can do it. And he certainly passed all those. Tests. All the reports were glowing about Bones and his performance there, and it's only to get better. But that said, this is most likely a rental. Don't you think that uh, somebody will pick him up and put him on the bag? I mean, for the rest of this season, he'll be with you guys, but do you foresee him being with Golf Channel in perpetuity, or do you see him going back to his normal spot on somebody's bag? I don't know quite honestly. I don't know his contract details, but he did a contract, and it was. Uh, I know that everybody who's living and has a job where you only work a few hours a day, and and you don't really have to be there for the practice rounds and what have you. It's hard to say goodbye to that. So I don't. I don't know if he's get back on the bed. Just a double replace surgery too, so it can't be that comfortable for him. It would have to be special offer from a pretty high profile. We're spending a few minutes with Jerry Foltz. He's a Golf Channel commentator and a gentleman that I've been lucky enough to know for quite some time and uh, brings a great perspective to the game. Plus, I thought in the light of the British Open wrapping up and uh, the PGA still to come in a couple weeks, this was the perfect time to have Jerry on. He does come out here each year for the ShopRite LPGA tournament. Now, those dates moved a little bit, Jerry. Uh, I'm sure you saw that come by on your feed. Uh, but uh, are, do you have thoughts on uh, Atlantic City and the ShopRite LPGA tournament that you come to each year? Yeah, I wouldn't miss that for the world. There's uh, there's about a handful of LPG events that really set themselves apart from a community support, community involvement standpoint, a crowd attendance standpoint, and overall just really good feel to them. And that, that certainly is one of them. We have some of the most knowledgeable and loyal uh, fans come out and support that each and every year. And that is one of my favorite courses in all of America. 5,500 yards to test every club in your bag, CBU does. Then it's uh, it's certainly my favorite course on the LPJ Tour. So I look forward to it, and I look forward to staying right there at Stockton CB Resort. Then, of course, where I see you occasionally over <laughs> yeah, you know, all built in. So you're going to LPJ Golf Camp for a week. That's a lot of fun. Sure is, and uh, yes, you uh, usually can catch me at the uh, 19th hole, as well as on the course in the media room and some other places, too, but uh, how convenient is it? I mean, literally, uh, what, 70, 80, 90 feet off the uh, number one tee box is uh, 
is a little place for some libations, and we sure do enjoy that. Well, tell us about the, the Denver's got good craft beer. Why are you in Denver? What's what's the deal out there tonight? And I know seven o'clock, uh, you can watch this world long drive uh, golf championship. You've covered these before, or is this your first go round? This is my third one. The Golf Channel in recent years got heavily, heavily involved in the World Long Drive Championship, now World Long Drive Tour. I think we have nine events leading up to the World Championships just outside of Dallas and Thackerville, Oklahoma in September. Uh, and this is one of them. This is our second time where we're uh, televising one of these, I guess I'd call them a regional type. And uh, it's exciting. You know, it's, it's not your typical golf audience. A lot of these guys don't even consider themselves golfers, but they hit the golf ball just unforgivable, unthinkable distances. Uh, it's a little bit of a cross between maybe a monster truck rally and, and cage fighting uh, on a driving range. And there's some great personalities. Uh, the viewers over to the roof every time we show up these because it, it's fun to watch. And, you know, they never played golf before, might not ever watch Jordan Speed win the British, win the Open Championship. Uh, him and his buddy can watch this and say, hey, Joey, let's go get a driver and go to the range and see if we can do something like that. Because it is it's uh, there's a lot of muscle, a lot of power on that on that driving range tonight. Um, the interesting thing to me is we started televising the women's semifinals and finals as well, mm -hmm. and two of the ladies can reach a club head speed uh, equal to Dustin Johnson and Bubba Watson. That is, it is absolutely phenomenal. They, they're great characters as well. Uh, earlier today in the elimination rounds to play into the televised event. The world record was broken three times. We had a 400, a 401, and a 402-yard drive Whoa. hit by the ladies. By the ladies. Now, it is in Denver. We're playing at a mile high of altitude, and it, there was a little helping wind. But 402 yards, that's just ridiculous. Did I see a 500 that they painted on the end of the range in, like, red, you know, to, just to see if somebody could get it? Uh, yeah, with favorable wind conditions this evening, we're fully expecting to see somebody hit at 500 yards. Holy cow! And, uh, oh, there's there's some fronting, there's music, there's cheering, there's it's it's just it's really a, it's an entertaining thing to watch for two hours. Well, I knew it was a little bit of a different sport a uh, bunch of years ago. Gosh, almost maybe a decade ago, uh, there was a local gentleman here in the South Jersey area that had gone out, I believe it was to Vegas, and had won a long drive championship and won a bunch of money, you know, and it got into it sort of when the tour or, or those sort of contests were still sort of fledgling. So that was the local connection. And then this year, you know, we play in the Pro-Am at the ShopRite uh, LPGA Classic, and we played Atlantic City Country Club, and we came to the one par five, and here was this gentleman, I mean, just this massive human being, and he had Chewy scroll scrolled on his bag, like Chewbacca, basically. And his name is Paul Howell. He's 6'5", he's 305 pounds, and he uses a driver with six and a half degrees loft, and he can hit it 455 yards. I mean, so this world long drive stuff keeps creeping into my consciousness, and then I get to see it again tonight with you on the commentary on the Golf Channel. So I can't wait to see how far they hit it uh, in the wonderful high elevation of Denver. Jerry Fultz with us here on the Sports Bash at 97.3 ESPN. Before we wrap up, buddy, I'll uh, just find out what the rest of your year's like and what your schedule's like then moving forward because it's always a treat for me when I tune into an event and then they say, let's kick it out to Jerry Fultz, and I go, hey, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got uh, a little bit of women's golf remaining, two more majors. I go back over to the U.K. I'm done here for the Women's British Open. Uh, we have the Evian Masters in France still. We have the Solheim Cup in a few weeks in Des Moines, where they've already sold enough tickets to, to set a new attendance record. As you know, uh, anytime you get a professional sports uh, event of any magnitude in the Iowa area or even you know the Midwest at all, away from major cities where they have major league teams, they turn out like crazy. So everybody's looking forward to that. I got some of the uh, PGA Tour in the fall and then the President's Cup, which I can't wait to, to go to. I went to my first one down in Korea two years ago. And that uh, it's kind of Ryder Cup light. It's what it is is Ryder Cup with enthusiastic but well behaved fans. So it's, it's a breath of, uh, breath of fresh air as well there. But it's going to be a busy fall. You know, there's no rest for the weary. And uh, and as, as soon as I start complaining about my job, I'm reminded that there's thousands of other guys who would like it. He's Jerry Foltz. He's from the Golf Channel. You can follow him on Twitter if you'd like, at Jerry Foltz. That's J-E-R-R-Y-F-O-L-T-Z. G-C is his Twitter handle with the blue check, which means he's verified and it's actually him. And, yes, those passport, that passport's getting a lot of stamps as you're going back to Scotland in a couple of weeks for the Rico Women's British Open and, like you said, President's Cup and all kinds of fun events coming up. Hey, pal, uh, it's so great 
to have spent time with you and catch up with you and be able to promote the World Long Drive Golf Championship that's taking place tonight, 7 o'clock on Golf Channel, and recap the British and stuff like that. Let's do it again sometime, okay? 